Quran. Perfect Wisdom. With the Divisions of the Abishamaya Lamkara. Translated by Edward Conze 1904-1979. University of California Press Berkeley, Los Angeles, London. Chapter 78. Skill in means in the purification of the Buddha field. Bound to win full enlightenment soon. Subhuti. Is again the Bodhisattva fixed in his destiny, or is he not? The Lord. He is fixed, and not not fixed. Subhuti. In which group, then, is he fixed, that of the disciples, that of the Pratyika Buddhas, or that of the Buddhas? The Lord. The Bodhisattva is not fixed on the level of the disciples or Pratyika Buddhas, but he is fixed on the level of a Buddha. Subhuti. Is, then, the Bodhisattva fixed when he has had his first thought of enlightenment, or when he has become irreversible, or when he is in his last becoming? The Lord. They are all equally fixed. Subhuti. Is, then, the Bodhisattva who is fixed in his destiny reborn in the states of woe? The Lord. No, he is not. What do you think, Subhuti, are the eighth lowest, the stream winner, too? The Pratyika Buddha reborn in the states of woe. Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. The Lord. So it is quite impossible that a Bodhisattva could be reborn in the states of woe if, beginning with the first thought of enlightenment, he gives gifts, too. Develops wisdom, develops friendliness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and impartiality towards all beings, and has established himself in such a way as to forsake all unwholesome dharmas. It is likewise impossible that he should be reborn among the long-lived gods. Or in regions inhabited by stupid people among whom wholesome dharmas are not current. Or among the impious barbarians of the border regions where the four assemblies are unknown. Or in families which hold wrong views. Or in places where one does not hear of the Buddha, Dharma, or Sangha. It is likewise impossible that he should fall into the false view that there is no karma or retribution. And it is also quite impossible that a bodhisattva who, from the first thought of enlightenment onwards has resolutely set out for the supreme enlightenment, should commit himself to the ten unwholesome paths of action. Subhuti. If the bodhisattva thus endowed with wholesome roots, is no longer reborn in the odious places of rebirth, how is it that the Tathagata has told about himself those Jataka stories in which he appears as an animal? Where to had those wholesome roots gone on those occasions? The Lord. It is not as a result of insalubrious karma that the Bodhisattva is reborn as an animal. But he acquires, for the sake of beings, deliberately, of his own free will, any kind of body through which he can work the wheel of beings. There are had saw. Pratyikabuddhas have that skill in means which would enable them to be reborn as animals. Subhuti. No, O oh Lord. The Lord. The Tathagata, however, has the skill in means which enables him to be reborn there. And when confronted with those who struggle to kill him, the Bodhisattva renounces himself with supreme patience for the sake of those very beings and does them no harm. In this way, Subhuti, you should know that the Bodhisattva, when for the sake of being he fulfills the great compassion, is even on the way to his supreme enlightenment reborn as an animal, but is not stained by the faults of animal life. Subhuti, having stood in which wholesome dharmas do. Bodhisattvas acquire these kinds of bodies. The Lord. Which is the wholesome dharma that the Bodhisattva should not fulfill. The supreme enlightenment is the fulfillment of all wholesome dharmas. Therefore there is not any wholesome dharma which the Bodhisattva should not fulfill, from the first thought of enlightenment onward until he is seated on the terrace of enlightenment. For it is impossible for him to know the supreme enlightenment while even one single wholesome dharma has remained unfulfilled. Therefore, then, the Bodhisattva should, from the first thought of enlightenment onward train in the fulfillment of all wholesome dharmas and, having trained therein, he reaches the knowledge of all modes and will forsake the last residues of the defilements.
Subhuti. How again is it that the Bodhisattva, when he is endowed with such pure dharmas, with the holy dharmas without outflows, is reborn in the states of woe or among animals? The Lord is, then, the Tathagata holy and without outflows. Subhuti. He is, O Lord. The Lord. Can, then, the Tathagata conjure up an animal which does his Buddha work for him? Subhuti. He can, O Lord. The Lord. Does, then, the Tathagata become an animal? Subhuti. No, O Lord. The Lord. Does he, then, experience an animal's sufferings? Subhuti. No, O Lord. The Lord. It is thus that the Bodhisattva, endowed with the holy Dharma without outflows, deliberately and of his own free will acquires a body which enables him to mature beings suitably in accordance with the deserts. Subhuti. Can, then, an arhat conjure up a fictitious magical creation who can do the work of an arhat, which generates joyous zest in others? The Lord. He can, Subhuti, he can. It is thus that a bodhisattva endowed with the Dharma which is holy and without outflows acquires deliberately and of his own free will and body which allows him to do a Buddha's work for living beings. But through this body he does not become subject to suffering, nor does he experience painful feelings. What do you think? Subhuti, if a magician exhibits illusory beings, in the shape of elephants, horses, bulls, or any other illusory beings, do they then become actual elephants, horses, bulls, or any other animals? Subhuti. No, O Lord. The Lord. It is thus that the Bodhisattva becomes endowed with the Dharma which is holy and without outflows and acquires deliberately and of his own free will a body which enables him to work the wheel of beings, but he does not experience the feelings which normally go with it. Subhuti. Greatly skilled in mean, O Lord, is the Bodhisattva who, even when endowed with the holy cognition, acquires any body which enables him to work the wheel of beings. The wheel of countless beings in which pure dharmas has the bodhisattva stood when he performed these kinds of skill in means, and yet was not stained by his activities. The Lord. It is when he has stood in perfect wisdom that the bodhisattva performs these kinds of skill in means, with the result that, in all the directions and subdirections in countless world systems he does the work of beings, but he is not affected by anything anywhere. And why? Because the Bodhisattva nowhere apprehends a Dharma which could affect him, or whereby or wherein he could be affected. And why? Because all these three Dharmas are empty of own being. For emptiness does not affect emptiness, nor can any Dharma affect emptiness, nor can emptiness be affected at all. And why? Because emptiness, being empty in its own being, cannot be apprehended in emptiness. This is the emptiness without basis in which the Bodhisattva has stood before he knows full enlightenment. Subhuti. Has he just stood in perfect wisdom and not in other dharmas? The Lord. Is there, then, any dharma which is not included in the perfection of wisdom? Subhuti. If perfect wisdom is through its own being empty, how, then, are all dharmas included in it? For in emptiness no dharma is included or non-included. The Lord. Are, then, all dharmas empty of all dharmas? Subhuti. They are, O Lord. The Lord. If all dharmas are empty of all dharmas, are, then, not all dharmas included in emptiness? Subhuti. So it is, O Lord. The Lord. By this method also you should know that, when he has stood in perfect wisdom, the Bodhisattva performs this kind of skill in means. The virtuous acts which consist in approaching, tending, the Buddhas. Subhuti, how does the Bodhisattva, who courses in perfect wisdom and has stood in the emptiness of all dharmas, conjure up the perfection of superknowledges, which enables him